Very well. Ms. Ochillo, in your testimony, you discussed the economic disadvantages impacting underserved uh, and unserved communities, both urban and rural. Can you please elaborate on this and the broader negative impact that inequitable broadband access has on our national economy? Well, I think that in general, there's this idea that when people say digital redlining, they automatically assume you're talking about an urban area. And we actually talk to uh, municipalities on a weekly basis. We've done so since April of 2020. We've talked to a new municipality. And what we find out is that that comes up in midsize and rural cities just as often, if not more so. What we know is that the places that have widespread access, they're the places that are able to attract innovation. They can maintain their population. They can actually allow residents to age in place. They have so many more benefits and advantages than the places where broadband is either unreliable or simply unaffordable. And it would actually help if the federal government, um, in terms of not only information sharing, thinking about all of the agencies that are getting involved in broadband, um, whether it's the uh, NTIA, USDA, and all sorts of agencies agencies, there should be some sort of centralized information sharing and actually building off of the things that we've learned from COVID, because we know that people have essentially had to come up with all sorts of creative solutions, and it would uh, actually help us to actually use those things to inform whatever's the strategy moving forward. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I've got 13 seconds, and I'm going to yield them back. 